Maddie? Type of church? What kind of church? Christian? Would you say, would you go as far as to say Protestant? Yeah? Okay. So a denomination is a type of Protestant church. Anything, anybody else want to add something else to that? Put your phone away. Anybody feel like they can add to that definition of a denomination? Why do we have denominations? Why don't we all just have one kind of church? Yes? People have different ideas about what God is. Okay. People have different ideas about who God is, about baptism, about communion. And so those differences have driven people to split into different denominations. So a denomination is basically a group of churches, like, do you guys know what the denomination of our church is? No? They say it every Sunday. <laughs> if you go to church, you might find out. Yes? Well, we're Protestant, but what specific denomination is our church? This church, the one you're in right now. United Church of Christ, good job. <laughs> and the United Church of Christ came together in um, 1950, like, somewhere around there. That's not the exact date. And so it is a group of churches that all kind of hold to the same ideas. Uh, and the UCC, that's what we call it, the UCC, United Church of Christ, is actually a fairly big denomination. There's churches all over the country. Do you know where the United Church of Christ started? Not in Omaha. No, the first, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Texas. <laughs> nope. No. The Pilgrims. Yep, the Pilgrims were the first people that uh, started the United Church of Christ. But they called them the Congregationalists. So they're all about congregational. Okay, now we're going to move on. So this tree here, it's on your paper. And this shows um, the, the church and its, uh, its eventual separation. So what's the first church? Judaism. Judaism. Why is the first church Judaism? Hey guys, if you can't sit together, don't sit together. What is it? We based our religion off of Judaism. We based our religion off Judaism. Okay. Who based who based our religion? What? Jesus was Jewish. Very good. And his followers were Jewish as well. So the first church was a Jewish one. And then after Jesus, uh, the church continued, but um, we would probably call it um, Catholic after that point, the first Catholic church. And um, it was all one church. And then in 1054, there was the great schism. Do you guys know what a schism is? No. Yes. A separation. A separation. A big divide, like a like a gorge, you know. And they call it the Great Schism. Now, what happened was, this is interesting. There were three popes at the same time, because popes wanted power, and they would wind up killing each other. So there were three popes: one in uh, Rome, one in Alexandria, and one in Antioch. And they all thought that they were the big pope. So there was this big split between the Eastern Orthodox, which went this way, and the Western uh, Church. So massive split in the church there. And it was the first split. The Great Schism was the first big split of the church. Now there were always little issues, you know, ever since the church came around. But that was the first big one that, that split the church. So then you have the Eastern Orthodox over here, which includes the Russian and Greek Orthodox. And then uh, as the tree grows, you get toward 1517, which is known as the Reformation. 
And the Reformation is when uh, Luther nailed his paper to uh, the Wittenberg door and said, you know, this uh, church is kind of corrupt. And uh, that was the birth of the Protestant church. And the word, word Protestant in it has the word protest because they are protesting the abuses of power of the popes and the bishops and, every, and all the priests and everything. So that's when the Protestant church was born, 1517. And there are different um, reformers. One was Martin Luther, one was uh, John Wesley. And you can see all the branches of the different churches. The Catholic church, you know, is over here. And then if you go up, there's the Lutheran church. That would be the people that follow Luther. The Anglican church, Methodist. Where are we? Do you guys see us? No. Mennonites, Pietists, Covenant. That, that was my old denomination. The Anabaptists, those were the ones that um, didn't believe in baptism. And then there's the Reformed Church right here. See this branch right here that goes that way? And on it you see Congregational. That's us. And uh, Christian Reform. Actually, the Reformed Church and the Congregational Church merged to make the United Church of Christ. Who's got questions? So, uh, all these denominations disagree about certain things, of course, and uh, that's what we're going to explore tonight. So, it's kind of like a couple weeks ago when you picked a religion and, and with a group, and you looked at the different aspects of it. You have a lot of... Uh, information here about the denominations, but you don't have every denomination represented. You have Catholic, Orthodox, Lutheran, Reformed, Presbyterian, Methodist, Anglican, Episcopal, Baptist. Uh, so you're going to pick a denomination and then you're going to answer those questions in the box and then we'll present them to the class and you can write them down. Everybody got it? Okay, find your group. You can stay in here or you can uh, go somewhere else. Whatever works for you. We did the loose. Oh, here. Yeah. We did the Lutheran, and it was founded in 1530 in Germany, and the founders were Martin Luther, Philip Molaskan. And the, adher the number of adherents was 66 million. The Reformation roots are German, baptism, holy sacrament that welcomes the people into the church family. That's it. That's it. Do you have anything that's... <laughs> no. Uh, well, that was all for our Okay. All believers and priests have uh, direct access to God. Uh, all people will go to heaven if they believe Caduce. in Stop talking. Jesus as their Savior. Yeah, Do you know any Lutherans? No? Maybe. You know one. Chris Alexander, our associate minister, is a Lutheran pastor. All right, uh, I'll give you guys a C on that one. You guys up? Yes. We're being graded on this now. We'll expand our. There, we got Uh, that table's not ready back there. You guys ready? Thank you. Good. <laughs> we chose Lutheran, and the date it was founded is 1530 in Germany. Their sacred text is the Holy Bible, the Old and the New Testaments only. And then their original language was German, and their worship guide is the Book of Concord. They have 66 million followers worldwide. Um, ministers can get married in their religion. 
We know one that is married. Is that it? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> we got an A plus. Uh, <laughs> a minus. All of us together have already gotten A. Okay. You guys ready? Yeah. We did the Hutterites. They were started in Czech in the early 1500s. Uh, they were Swiss Anabaptists. They're pacifist and against child baptism. They see death as a passage to paradise for the faithful. The head preacher is the head of the colony and communion should be held in remembrance of Jesus. They live in colonies of 15 families, and in the 1870s, they moved to South Dakota. Uh, all members of the colony are provided for equally. Nothing should be kept for personal gain. They have half an hour of church services every day, but one and a half hours uh, on Sundays and special occasions. Did you say church every day? Yep. Whoa. <laughs> oh. And they also said that they don't believe in infant baptism, baby, baptizing babies. What do you guys think of that? How many of you guys were baptized when you were a baby? All right. So there are churches that don't believe in that, like the Baptist church. Uh, who else is ready? You guys ready? Didn't you go? Yeah. Hutterites. You guys ready? Okay. H-U-T-T-E-R-I-T-E-S. Hutterites. That's an awful high five. We did the Catholic religion. Um, I... Infant baptism except, ex, uh, accepted, and they are opposed from women leading. Um, they have eternal hell, and the punishment is basically eternal separation from God. Demons are fallen angels who can never repent. There's no communion. What? It didn't happen. It didn't happen. Oh, okay. Satan is pure, spirit, evil, and powerful. Is that it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. There was no. Okay. Uh, anybody know any Catholic people or? Anybody in here grow up in the Catholic Church? Anybody grow up Catholic? No? I think uh, what they were trying to say, and you guys might want to write this down, is that what the Catholics believe about communion, which is one of the sacraments, actually the Catholics have seven sacraments, and we have, how many do we have here at the United Church of Christ? How many sacraments do we have? Two. Do you know what they are? <laughs> Baptism and communion. In the Catholic Church, uh, babies are baptized on like the eighth day. And then uh, in communion, the bread and the juice actually become the body and blood of Jesus. That's what a Catholic believes. So that's called transubstantiation. You should write that down. <laughs> All right, Orthodox, you ready? You ready? Okay. That's fine. Ours was Methodist. And they were dominant in England and the USA. Um, they believe in the Book of Discipline, and their like main church is the United Methodist Church.
They believe in the Holy Scripture contains all things necessary to salvation. They, be they believe afterlife determine is determined by God's grace and moral character. Um, church authority can marry and they can be one. Some agree on infant baptism, but others don't. And they also believe in the death penalty. And communion is open to anyone. And they're also opposed to same-sex marriage. The end. Job. The Methodists actually believed that there was a method that was correct to follow. That's why they're called the Methodists. That that your faith, you know, there was a method. You do certain practices daily. You guys ready? Yes. All right. Okay. Okay, here we go. We did the Episcopal Church. Um, their sacred text is the Holy... Yeah. What? Spell it. E-P-I-S... It's on the paper. It's abbreviated. Just put an A-L at the end of it. Episcopal. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. The sacred text is the Holy Bible, um, only the Old Testament and the New Testament. Um, women in church leadership are accepted, and they believe in ordination as women. Um, they believe in eternal hell, and priests and bishops lead the church, and they reject praying to saints. Um, in baptism, a person is made one with Christ, and is received into the fellowship of the church. Communion is ordained by Christ using his words of institution. Okay, the end. Does anybody know any Episcopals? No. Do you know uh, where the closest Episcopal church is? It's just down the street. Yeah, it's just down the street. That way. St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. Do you guys know... Uh, what praying to the saints means? Pray. Let's not. Pray to the certain saints that are designated by that church. And usually for a specific thing, you know, like uh, there's a saint you pray to when you travel on a plane so you don't crash and stuff like that. I just like to make this comment. This isn't an accessible thing. This is a Catholic thing. But they do have feast days for the saints, right? Days for the saints? Yeah. Does our church pray to the saints? No. You guys ready now? Who's ready? You guys ready? Orthodox people? They're ready. Okay. Okay, so we also did the Catholic religion.
religion. Um, so they believe demons are fallen, saint or angels. The whole <laughs> we did this wrong. <laughs> okay. The Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and from the Son. They think the devil is pure and powerful. They believe in exorcism. Exorcism. Yeah, that. You know what that is? No. Stop laughing. You're not really talking. Oh, wait, what are we doing? Mary had no original sin. Free to do good or evil. <laughs> Married couple forms intimate partnership. Satan is a pure spirit, but limited by God's providence. That's all we have. Okay. <laughs> Exorcism. That is uh, a yes. Don't they like take out the evil spirit? Though? Yeah, it's a ritual to take out an evil spirit. So a person that does that is called an exorcist. Do we do exorcisms here at Countryside? No. no. <laughs> and uh, hey, you guys, listen up. Yeah, you had your turn to talk. Uh, the free to do good or bad. What's that also called? Free will. So some denominations believe in free will, some believe that no, that there isn't free will, there's predestination, which means it's all decided for you. So, Orthodox. Yeah. Rachel, are you coming too, Paul? Okay, we also did Orthodox. Well, I mean, you're the only one. Okay, I guess so. It was founded in 1054 AD due to the great schism between the East and the West. And the Orthodox is the East side. One of the founders was Patriarch Michael Cerularius. It has 20, 225 million adherents worldwide. Wow. 225 million. Uh, the doctrine is based on the Bible plus the sacred apostolic tradition. And whether they believe the Bible is the inerrant word of God depends on which church, kind of church, orthodox church it is. I couldn't find anything on baptism, and neither on anything else. <laughs> I mean, I guess I could. I just didn't have time to. Maybe Rachel can fill in some of the lines. Um, they had Russian and Greek origins, I read that. Um, the original language was Greek. Um, the, take, the sacred text that they read was the Holy Bible and the Apocrypha. And for Creed Confessions, they are something called the Nit Nicene Creed. And I also note that the rest of it is kind of like what we have, so. Okay, I guess that's it. Okay. Who knows what the word orthodox means? What? It means accepted, the accepted tradition. Yeah. The kind of 
beliefs that have been passed down for the generations, and you, you continue to put that forward. So it's the old time, like the old school beliefs. Is our church orthodox? No. <laughs> Not at all. Okay. And uh, the Apocrypha, that's a separate writing in addition to the Bible. Some believe that it's part of the Bible. Some believe that um, it isn't. So, and then what's another word you said? They said uh, inerrant. They believe that the Bible is inerrant. Is that right? What does that mean? You guys know what inerrant means? It means that every single word is exactly what it should be. There's no um, error at all in the Bible. So some churches, uh, they, we call them fundamental churches, they believe that the Bible is literal, and a lot of churches believe that the Bible is inerrant, which means no errors at all in the writing. So it's as if God took their hand and went, arr, 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 arr. yeah. Right, there's a difference between being, it being literal and it being inerrant. Right? Yes. Yes. Literal just means it's exactly right there. Inerrant means there's no, no problems with it at all. And then there's also the word that you might hear called infallible, which would mean the same thing as inerrant. All right, we have a couple more. Are you guys going to present? Is there anybody else we didn't get? Okay. Did it die? Yeah, it did. I could just scream it. <laughs> I'll go over there. You're not gonna scream it? Oh, you told you or it is Orthodox? Um, I guess so. Okay. Everybody ready? For okay. communion. For communion, we they eat bread and they drink wine at communion. Like every time they have communion. No single authority, and there's no like earthly like herd. It's just like one huge group, and like anyone can talk whenever. They believe in mythology. They like do favors for like the people who are getting baptized, and like they have to wear like these special shoes. Each house has a special place to pray to God. The end. Thank you. All right. Very interesting. So uh, you can see the major uh, things that denominations have uh, disagreed on over the years. And uh, some of those, real quick, are like where you go when you die, where you came from. The meaning of baptism. Who we baptize? Do we baptize babies or do we baptize only adults that choose it? What what are the elements in communion? And some some even differ on how often to have communion. You know, we have it every week. Not every church would agree with that. So uh, take a minute and and answer the question at the bottom of the page if you were to join the denomination that you chose, would your life change and how? And then when you're done with that, you're free to go. Jay, I don't think you wrote anything. That's impossible.
I just said it. 